Hey, hello guys, this is Kathik from ExvirAutomation.com and this is part 5 of our Appium with Java video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about running Appium test using Visual Studio emulator for Android. So, before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 of this video series and part 1 and 2 videos of general tools playlist video series of Execute Automation channel since we will be discussing something about Visual Studio emulator for Android in that playlist of Execute Automation channel. Alright, so configuring desired capabilities for Visual Studio emulator. So before actually looking into the configuration of Visual Studio emulator, let me switch to Chrome and show you the playlist we have already discussed about Visual Studio emulator in greater detail. So this is the Execute Automation channel and you can see we have a playlist called General Tools. So if you click this, you can see that we have two videos discussing on Visual Studio Emulator for Android part 1 and configuring Visual Studio Emulator for Android in Eclipse which is part 2. So these two videos talk in greater detail about installation of Visual Studio Emulator in Windows PC and also configuring the Visual Studio Emulator with your Eclipse and running the test from there. Right? So please go through these two videos before starting to watch this particular video which we are discussing right now. Alright, so let's flip back to the slide. So for configuring the desired capabilities for Visual Studio Emulator, first we need to set the desired capabilities for our Appium server to send the request to the Visual Studio Emulator. That's very important, right? As we already discussed in understanding Appium video series in Exit Automation channel, we talked how the Appium server contacts the emulator to perform the operation. So here we are not going to use the out of the box Android emulator, rather we are going to use the Visual Studio emulator which is completely a different emulator. So we have to somehow tell the Appium server that go and look to this particular emulator's devices. right? So first of all, we need to configure the Appium server to send the request to the Visual Studio emulator. And then we need to change our client code to point the Visual Studio emulator. So we have to make two changes. So before starting to do that, first of all, we need to know what is the name of the device which we are running. So let me also show you the emulator which is currently running in my machine. So this is the emulator which I am running and this is actually a uh, emulator which is coming along with your Visual Studio emulator for Android, right? Please go ahead and watch those two videos in the general tools playlist so that you can have a complete understanding of what these two is actually doing, right? So here as you can see the navigation is pretty faster and that's the reason we are going to switch to this particular emulator in all our videos which we're going to discuss in Appium video series, right? And here is our uh, applications like calculator and you can perform a very simple operations like this and it's pretty faster and that's the reason I have chosen this emulator as opposed to the emulator which is coming out of the box with Android SDK. Right? Awesome. So now we need to know the name of this device but actually the name of the device is not listed in this particular Visual Studio emulator for Android rather what we can do is we can open the Android SDK's ADB to get the name of the device which is running. So for that I'm going to my ADB. Uh, so this is the path for my ADB so I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to the command prompt and then let me quickly flip to F colon and here put ADB since this is the uh, this emulator is also running with the device bridge so this can easily be uh, the device name can be easily found from here and then we have a command called devices hyphen L so this will give you the number of devices which is running currently and you can see that the device which is running is this it is running in this port number and the device product is VS Emulator 5 KitKat, something like that. And then uh, it has a device name like Donatello. I really don't know what it is. So I'm just going to copy this guy. And then I'm going to my Appium server to send and receive the request from the Visual Studio Emulator. So first let's flip to the Appium server. So this is the Appium server. 
So right now I'm going to the Android setting and here the device name just paste the device name I've already did that for my testing purpose so I'm just enabling the device name here that's it and don't choose anything from here even I have removed the uh, uh, devices and the launch AVD etc right so I'm not going to launch the AVD right now that's it so this is the super simple configuration for your Appium server and now just hit run to start the Appium server up and running. So it is right now running. And then the next thing is we need to change the client code, right? So for that, again, I'm going to my client code. And remember, this is the same code which we discussed in part four of our Appium with the Java video series, right? So please go ahead and watch that video as well for a continuity. And then here, instead of the device name as the Android emulator, I'm going to change this to Donatello right and then I'm gonna save this guy that's it this is the most complex configuration right all right so just kidding and then uh, let me quickly run this test and now if you have already watched the videos in part 4 of this particular video series you'll know how slow the operation was to perform a simple addition operation of 56 plus 93 equals it was very very slow but right now if I execute the same test using Visual Studio emulator for Android you can see a awesome performance compared to the one which we already discussed so let me quickly run this so for running again go to run as and test ng test because we're running the test ng test in our project so I'm just gonna hit run and now your Appium server should be running and then go to the emulator as well and now you can see the emulator is pretty fast and it will start to work from there oops seems like it is not able to find the emulator and it's showing the zero emulator is connected I know what the problem is actually if you go to the code once again you can see that we have not disabled the capability AVD of test because this will actually open the Android AVD so you need to also disable this code if the code is there surely this code is not going to work so I'm going to comment this code out and then uh, let's see this test is already running so I'm going to stop this test and then let's also uh, try to run this test once again and see how it works so I'm going to run the test hopefully right now the test should execute but uh, the reason is the session will already be running so we need to somehow restart the Appium server to create a new session and that's why the new session could not be created error is coming so we have to somehow stop this Appium server and start it once again so I'm going to the Appium server let's stop this clear the log and let's start it once again so right now if the Appium server is up and running then it should be fine so I'm going to run the test once again and now let's see if the application is opening and you can see that the application has launched lightning fast and it's performing the operation very quickly compared to your actual out-of-the-box Android SDK's emulator see the test has got passed and it is very very faster if we use the same test with our classical Android SDK's emulator then it will be very very slow so from this video onwards, we're going to use only the Visual Studio emulator for Android in all our future automations, right? But there is one more side note uh, to add. If we use uh, this particular emulator, we have a small bug with the uh, Appium because this is pretty new and Appium server might not have the knowledge of what this guy is all about. So the reason is, if you use the Appium inspector and if you try to refresh it, it will actually throw you an error in the Appium server. At the same time, it does not capture the image of the Appium that you are uh, running. And you can see there is a fail to connect the server and also there is some other uh, errors been uh, popping up. So this will not support. So there are some issues with this as of now. So just bear with me. Uh, we'll probably have a workaround soon from the Appium team as well. All right. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.